Wasn't it a beautiful day today? We've had a be- couple real good days this week. And good to see that sun shining. And the birds are singing and won't be long. The frogs will be a-hollering and it'll be springtime. We'll be through this winter. So thank the Lord for that. Jevic, you come and sing for us while he's coming. Tate, you get, get ready. Get a song ready for me. Bring your shame, bring your guilt, and bring your pain. Don't you know that's not your name? You will always mean much more to me. Every day I wrestle with the voices that keep telling me I'm not right. That's all right, cause I hear a voice and it calls me redeemed. When others say I'll never be enough And greater is the one living inside of me Than he who is living in the world In the world In the world And greater is the one living inside of me Than he who is living in the world Bring your doubt and bring your fear Bring your hurt and bring your tears There'll be no condemnation here You are holy, righteous, and redeemed Every time I fall, there'll be those who will call me a mistake That's okay, cause I hear a voice and it calls me redeemed When others say I'll never be enough And greater is the one living inside of me Than he who is living in the world In the world And it doesn't matter Cause the cross already won the war I am learning to run freely Understanding just how he sees me And it makes me love him more and more There'll be days I lose the battle Grace says that it doesn't matter Cause the cross already won the war I am learning to run freely Understanding just how he sees me And it makes me love him more and more Cause I hear a voice and it calls me redeemed When others say I'll never be enough And greater is the one living inside of me Than he who is living in the world In the world In the world And greater is the one living inside of me Than he There'll be days I lose a battle, Grace says that it doesn't matter Cause the cross already won the war I am learning to run freely, understanding just how he sees me And it makes me love him more and more Than he who is living in the world Why it ever chose me has always been a mystery. All my life I've been told I belong at the end of the line with all the other not quite, with all the other get it right. But it turns out they're the ones you've been looking for all this time. Cause I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody. All 
all about somebody who saved my soul. And ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. Well, Moses had snakes right. And David brought a rock to a sword fight And you picked twelve outsiders Nobody would have chosen it Changed the world The moral of the story is Everybody's got a purpose So when I hear that devil start talking to me Saying, who do you think you are? Well, I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody All about some Saving my soul And ever since you rescued me You gave my heart a song to sing I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus So let me go down, down, down In history As another place Faithful member of the family And if they all forget my name Well, that's fine with me I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus So let me go down, down, down In history As another blood bought Faithful member of the family And if they all And ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. start i gotta thank the lord for watching over us we've been uh, running around all day today um Brittany had uh, her three-hour glucose test and it was brutal bless her heart she uh, got through it though and uh, she was able to eat afterwards and i'm thankful for that but um another thing i didn't i hadn't really paid much attention to it but i got anointed my i got my shoulder anointed a while back and I completely forgot about it. And Mark had asked me how it was doing. I said, well, it's, now you mentioned it, it's doing better. I mean, and I, I've got full range of motion in my arm. It doesn't hurt a bit. Um, I can push and pull on people while I'm at work and everything. And, you know, I got to thank the Lord for that because uh, it was bothering me quite a bit. And uh, that's only God. I mean, I didn't do any therapy. I didn't have surgery and I'm thankful for that. But um, Mary asked me to sing this song, I think it was a few Sundays ago. And I believe this is a song she wanted, so I'm going to try my best to do that for her. I chose you before you knew who I was I heard you crying down in Egypt's land You are my people And I am your God A covenant you cannot comprehend I'm gonna take you on a journey we're gonna walk across the sea But children, don't you worry Let me set your mind at ease Yeah. 
that's when I'll do the miracle. We are His people, and He is our God. He saved us from a wicked world of Stormy tides of life come crashing in. We have but one purpose, and that's to trust with all our hearts, then to stand back with wonder as we watch the water. A bundle of sticks She decided the next meal Was the last one that she'd ever fix Then along came Elijah Saying don't be afraid Just go and do As you hear the Lord say And seeing your faith Surely he will make a way So she poured all the oil Out of the cruise And the last of the flour from the barrel she scooped Made cakes for the prophet herself And her little son too Well the flour from the barrel It never ran short And the oil from the cruise Continued to pour Beyond the bottom of her barrel She reached into the top of the Lord At the bottom of the barrel will provide every need he shall supply when all that we have is then all that he has begins there's nothing but a miracle at the bottom of the barrel well there are here in this life when everything's wrong and nothing seems right but we walk by faith we don't walk by sight and when there are no cattle out in the stalls and when all the graves from the vines fall God promised that he would take care of it all at the bottom of the bed provide every need he shall supply when all that we have is then all that he has begins there's nothing 
nothing but a miracle at the bottom of the barrel. But a miracle at the bottom of the barrel. I am being The greatest on earth Our flag stands for freedom And what it is worth She stands in the harbor Miss Liberty calls For all have gave some And some have gave all For me to be blessed Oh, I have been blessed God so good to me Precious are His thoughts of you and me. No way I could count them. There's not enough time. So I just thank Him for being so kind. My God has been good. So good. I have been blessed. Well, He's my shoulder to lean on when I am down. That rock where He leads me when I'm so overwhelmed. That place where He hides me under His wings. He's not just a song. It's a reason I breathe because I have been blessed. Oh, I have been blessed. God's so good to me. Precious are His thoughts of you and me. No way I could count them. There's not enough time. So I'll just thank Him for being so kind. My God has been good. So good. I have been blessed. Our God is so good. So good. Well, I have been blessed. It's also uh, good to have Tom and Janice back in the building with us. They're fully vaccinated. And uh, it's good to, we miss them when they ain't here. It's good to have them back. All right, if God's been good to you, say amen real loud as the preacher's coming. Amen. They're awake, Caleb, so come on. Amen. I love that song. I have been blessed. I, um, my favorite part, it says, uh, so I'm just going to thank him for being so kind. And man, the Lord's been awful kind to us here tonight, hasn't he? He's been way better to us than what we, what we really ever deserve. You know, if all, all the Lord ever did for us was just save us and leave us alone, that would have been enough. If he would just saved us and left us alone right there. Never done another thing for us. But we look around us tonight and we got all these undeserved blessings in our life and uh, all the things that God does for us. And um, we all know where our next meal is going to come from and we don't have to worry about where, you know, with, we got plenty of food to eat and, and we got good air to breathe. And God's even given us a beautiful week, hasn't he? The, the sun's shining. And it seems like it's been so uh, gloomy outside. It seems like this uh, week of sunshine has made even people in a, in a better mood. I've noticed, even going to the store and things, people are a lot more happy when the sun's out. And, uh, and it has been a beautiful week that God has given us. And I thank him. I know it's, um, it seems as if we've been hit kind of hard um, I know last week we lost a good saint of God and Brother Paul Hagen, and um, that was kind of unexpected. Um, we got the phone call to pray for him, and then it just seemed as if it wasn't too long after that phone call was made that he was gone. And, um, but he is where he's, where he's worked to be. Uh, he's in heaven, 
and we ain't got a question out of worry about that. And then, of course, uh, the passing of Burnett's brother, Danny McCain. It's just uh, our hearts are heavy tonight, really, uh, in, in a lot of ways. And um, we got a lot hurting. And uh, I knew there wouldn't be m many here tonight due to a lot of many different reasons. Um, but uh, I do believe God gave me a message for right here and right now. And um, I believe God gave this to me. And it's, it's helped me, and it's been a blessing to me, and I hope that it'll be a blessing to you. I promise I won't be real long. You give me a good 20 minutes. Mark always said the Wednesday night service needs to go till 9 o'clock. And my goodness, it's only 8.04. So uh, uh, you left me plenty of time uh, to, to preach tonight. But uh, I, you give me a good 20 minutes, and uh, I, I promise I'll be done. And if you say amen a lot, I might get done in 15 minutes <laughs> if, if you amen me real good. But if you have your Bibles and you want to turn with me tonight, I'm going to be in Exodus chapter number 3. In Exodus chapter number 3. I'm going to read a few scriptures tonight and I'll get right into the message. Exodus chapter number 3. I'm going to start with verse number 14. This is basically the scripture where Moses was introduced to the Lord, more or less. The Lord... The Lord uh, uh, was never introduced to us. He knew us long before we ever got here. It was just us being introduced to him. And uh, this is kind of the uh, Moses being introduced to the Lord here in Exodus chapter number three. Uh, it was actually the work of God and the move of God that Moses was even alive. Uh, we look at Moses when he was a baby and his mother building that ark. And, and it's even a miracle that he was even alive in the age that he was, that God, the, the hand of God directed that, that little ark. Uh, so here's Moses being introduced to the Lord. And uh, in verse number 14, it says this. And God said unto Moses, I like this right here, right off the bat. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. And God said, Moreover unto Moses, Thou shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me unto you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeareth unto me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction. Here in Exodus, that's all I'm going to read. Here in Exodus chapter 3, verses 14 and 17, God says this to Moses. He says, and this is my memorial. This is my memorial. Every single year uh, here in, in this country, every single year we have a three-day weekend that we set aside and we call it Memorial Day weekend. And I feel like here tonight that, that to a lot of people, that's just a three-day weekend. It really is. But that is really a weekend that is set aside to remember the ones that has is, that is left us, uh, to remember our soldiers that have fought for this country and that have bled and sweat and even died for our freedoms here tonight, that we get to sit in a comfortable gym and, and comfortable chairs and a nice, nice heated building when it's a little cold outside. I, I'm thankful, and I can I say tonight that we have that weekend and their life is worth remembering. It is a good weekend, Memorial Day weekend. It is a good weekend. And we even have a service here at Beach Fork. We have for many years a Memorial Day service. And we have slideshows and, and things like that. And, and uh, we, you know, we get a day off work. It's a three-day weekend for, for a lot of people. And here we see the Lord say to Moses, He says, and this is my memorial. There was things that God wanted Moses to remember. How many of you know tonight that God knows what's going to happen tomorrow before it even gets here? God knows what's going to happen next week, and God knows what's going to happen in the year of 2022 and the year of 2030. God is perfectly aware of what's going to happen to me and perfectly aware of what's going to happen to you tomorrow by about this time. He knows that. He looks into the future and knows. And he knew what Moses was about to get into when he told Moses to go, you know, go to Pharaoh, tell him to set, let my people go. And he knew everything that was going to take place before it even happened. God knew that. He knew that Moses was going to stand there with millions of people behind him in front of a Red Sea 
and to cross over and go into the wilderness. He knew everything that was going to take place. He knew that it was going to be a rough journey. And can I say this tonight to you here? If everything's good in your life right now, that's wonderful. You should say amen. Uh, you know, you can re you rejoice and you can listen to the song Tate just sung, I Have Been Blessed. And we can lift our hands and we can thank God if we ain't got nothing going on right now. Everything's good between us and Him. We're saved. We know we're saved. And we got food to eat. We got cars to drive. We got money. And everything's good in our life. Let's raise our hand and let's say amen for that. But I can promise you this and make this promise and stand on it. There is going to come a time in your life where you are going to get to your lowest of lows. There's going to come a time in your life where something is going to happen that's going to be bad and something's going to happen that you didn't see coming and it's going to break you in half and almost squeeze the life out of you. And God knows when that time's going to come. We don't know when that time's going to come. But every single one of us here tonight is going to experience heartache and going to experience pain, going to experience bitterness and hurt. And we're even going to have times in our life where we think, God, are you even there? Are you even hearing what I'm saying right now? Are you hearing my prayer? We are all going to experience that in our life. If you haven't yet, just pack your lunch because it's going to happen to you one, one way or another. That, that thing called life is going to happen where it's going to break us in half. And God knew that that was going to happen to Moses. And God told Moses, Moses, before you start this journey, there's things that I want you to remember along the way to not forget. And tonight there was three things that I believe God showed Moses before Moses' journey even really begun. Those three things that I, that I feel like we need to remember and we need to look at tonight. And I ain't going to tell you anything or preach to you anything tonight that you don't already know. But sometimes it's good to just to be reminded of the small things in life. I know when we go through those times where it feels like life is squeezing us and pulling us in every direction, I know a lot of times it seems like we can forget the goodness of God. We can forget the grace of God. We can forget and underestimate the power of God when we get into those hurtful places in our life. Here I believe tonight that God was trying to show Moses this. He said, I love the way this started off that I read to you tonight in verse 14. It says this, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And man, I'm thankful tonight to know that God is what he says that he is. That he's not a God that, that is one thing one day and something else the next day, but we serve a God tonight that does not change, doesn't know how to change. The Bible says that he's what? The same yesterday, today, and forever. I believe he told the prophet Malachi this, I am the Lord and I change not. I'm thankful tonight that in an ever-changing world, that here tonight in this church we are serving a never-changing God, that he's always going to be the same. And I believe this is what God was wanting Moses to know tonight, is Moses, I am consistent. You are going to come across people that's not consistent. You're going to be serving people that's not consistent. You're going to be living by people that's not consistent. But there's one thing that you can take to the bank, Moses. I am that I am. I am consistent and I will be consistent in your life. Amen. Aren't you thankful tonight that we serve a consistent God? Man, wouldn't it be awful if we served a God that wasn't there on Thursdays or wasn't there on Tuesdays? We serve a God that's there all the time. Seven days a week, he doesn't take days off. He is consistent in our life. The other night, I went out and preached down in, uh, last week, last Thursday night, and, and a man spoke up and was wanting a, a, a cloth anointed. So we did that. We gathered around, and he was wanting to have the cloth anointed for a friend. He was just 30-something years old, and he couldn't work. He, he would try to go to work, and he had some kind of disease that was very rare, that I've never heard of before, and I would try to tell, you know, tell you what it is, but I couldn't pronounce it if I tried. But he has a disease where basically out of nowhere his whole body will go numb. His feet will go numb, his hands will go numb, and he loses the control of his body, and he can't do anything but just lay there. Sometimes he'll, it'll be that way for an hour, or sometimes he'll just be paralyzed for a few minutes, but then it always just comes right back. His body will just go numb, and he, feel, he can't feel his body, and and uh, he can't work, and he's just 30-some years old, not very old at all. And we would come around the altar, and, and we prayed for him, and, and had a cloth anointed for him. And, and the man that had the cloth anointed for him is a good Christian man. And uh, Tyson knows who he is. He was there with me that night. Good Christian man. And, this, and he come up to me after church, and he said, Keb, it has been a long time since I've seen God do a complete healing in somebody's life. That's what he said. 
If we serve a God that's never changing, He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the Lord and He changes not. I believe my Bible to be true tonight, don't you? I, I know Him to be consistent. I know Him to be a, a never-changing God. But He said, I've been saved for 57 years. And He said, when I first got saved, He said, it was almost as if I experienced somebody being healed every week. He said, you would pray and they would pray with faith and believe and said, I've seen people walk in on crutches and they walk out with no crutches. And we've seen some stuff like that here. We got proof over there on the wall, don't we? That we've seen stuff like this take place. We've seen God heal cancer. We've seen God put homes back together that, that looked like it was divorce waiting to happen. We've seen God do things like that around here because we serve a consistent God. But let me tell you why we don't see things like that in, anymore. It's not because we don't serve a God that's not consistent. It's because there is people that's not consistent. God's not changed, but we the people have changed. We have changed. And we serve a God tonight that's going to be there and that is consistent. And my goodness sakes, I think tonight it would be good if, you know, if we in our life would stay consistent to Him because He stayed consistent to us. I know that we have flesh on us and that we're, we're humans and, and we're going to mess up and we're going to make mistakes and we're going to get angry sometimes. I've, I've heard preachers say, well, if you're saved, you won't get mad. Well, they, they got some other salvation I don't know nothing about because there's been times I get upset and there's been times things happen in life that bother me and, and get angry and things like that are going to happen. But I'm thankful that we serve a consistent God that when we do slip or do, when we do mess up, that man, His grace is always there it's always fresh and it's always real every single time. And that's because tonight he is consistent. You know what I think that, uh, you know, I know, I know Burnett and I know, I know she's tore up right now. You know, I know that she's, she's, her heart's breaking and it's easy to see that her heart is breaking. But you know what she's going to experience through this breaking process? She's going to experience and know that she is serving a consistent God. Consistent God. That was one of those things that I was talking about that will squeeze the life out of us. Right now, she probably feels like the life is being squeezed out of her, but she will find out if she hasn't already. She knows that we are serving a consistent God. And can I tell you something? I am thankful. I just want to take time for a second and lift my hands and thank God that I'm serving a consistent God, that when I've needed Him to move in my life and when I've needed Him to move in my family's life, that He was consistent to be there. And to help us along the way, the Bible says this, I lift my eyes unto the hills, for which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Tonight, He is our helper. He helps us in the time of trouble, and He's consistent at it. He's consistent at it. I'm thankful for a consistent God tonight. He looked at Abraham and told Abraham, Abraham, I am that I am. And that should have been enough right there to know that God is who He says He is. But second. Secondly, tonight, not only did he want Moses to know that he was consistent, but he also wanted Moses to remember his compassion. His compassion. Verse 16 said this, I have surely visited you and seen that which was done to you in Egypt. I am thankful tonight that we have a God that will visit with us. Aren't you? Uh, wouldn't it be awful tonight if we served a God that just popped in and checked on us every once in a while and just made sure we was all right? We don't serve a God like that tonight, but we serve a God that if we open up our Bible and we pray and we ask God to show us, I think we serve a God tonight that will visit with us and will come with us that when I kneel down and I call upon his name, the hairs stand up on the back of my neck and my arm. And that's not because something that happened on the inside or something good happened me throughout today. That's the Lord visiting with me. And I'm thankful tonight that we have a God that will visit with us. Amen. We have a God tonight that is King of kings and Lord of lords. And he'll come right to my house and he'll visit with me. And he'll visit with you. He'll visit with you. It would be awful if he just popped in and checked on us every once in a while. But he wanted Moses to know and wanted Moses to remember is, Moses, when you get to those hard places, you need to know, if you call upon me, I'll come and I'll visit with you. I'll visit with you. And I think all of us are sitting here tonight and we can remember a time in our life where we was broken and when we was uh, tore up and we didn't know what was going to happen the next day from the next. Just tore up. But we can also remember that time on a random day where you started singing that song or you started reading that verse or you started praying that prayer and about that time, I don't know where the Lord showed up and he visited with you. You ever have an experience like that 
where the Lord will just show up in a special way and He'll visit with you and He'll have company with you. You know that word visit means that you actually have to spend time with someone. That even some definitions say you have to spend the night. That's what visiting is to spend the night. I'm thankful I serve a Savior tonight that will visit with me. Here I am, a dumb country boy that does not deserve Him, but yet when I call upon His name, He will come and He will dine and He will visit with me and He will visit with you. He wanted Moses to remember in the hard times and in the good times, I'll come and visit with you. Amen. I'm thankful tonight I serve a God that will come and he'll show up for us and he'll visit with us. And I'm thankful we serve a God that we, we open up these church doors. We come and we welcome him in with open arms. You know what he does? He visits with us here at Beach Fork. And we need to recognize, we need to thank him for coming and visiting with us. Amen. I felt, I felt real good to... To, let, to just let God know, God, I love when you come and visit with me. Hallelujah. It's good that we serve a God. Amen. That visits. Amen. That's right. It would be terrible, terrible to have a God that just checked in with us on Tuesdays from 12 to 1, wouldn't it? But man, we got a God that whenever you need him, He's not just a part-time God. He's not a God that works just every other weekend, but he's a God that's active every day, every hour, every second of our life. All we gotta do is call upon his name and he promised that he would visit with us. We need to remember that. We need to remember that when we get to those places in our life where we feel broken and when we feel like we can't lift our head, that all we gotta do is call upon him and he'll come and he'll visit with us. He'll visit with us. I don't know sometimes why things happen the way that they do. I really don't know why. Bible says in Romans, for we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Isn't that what it says? And that's a good day verse. That's a, that's a day right there where everything's good and everything's wonderful. But there's been times in my life, and I'm sure there's been times in your life as well, where you looked up towards God and said, God, I don't understand how this situation is working anything for my good. I don't understand how it's working anything for my family's good. And, and we sometimes question and we, we don't understand. And I wish I had the answers to stand up here and tell you why God does the things that he does, but I don't understand. I believe the song says this, we'll understand it better by and by. Isn't that what it says? I've heard people say that they've questioned God in their life on why God does what he does. And, and they say when they get to heaven, they're gonna ask God, you know, why he did, did this and why, why he did that. But I could almost promise you tonight that when we get to heaven, we won't really care why God did what he did. And when we've been there 10,000 years, it'll just be like we've been there for an hour. Just be like day one. There was a, there was a wealthy lawyer in the Chicago area. His name was Mr. Spafford. And he was a wealthy man. He had four daughters. He had a son. But in 1780, he, he lost his son to a sickness. Sickness come over his son's body and it took his life and he passed away and he died. Not very old. Just a few months after that, in the great Chicago fire, he lost a lot of his assets, lost a lot of his business in that fire. And just a few years after that, the economy took a dive for the worst. And the story didn't say what happened to his family. He said, but when the economy took a dive for the worst, that it left his family completely devastated. And this, this lawyer was personal friends with, with D.L. Moody. And he was trying to encourage his family and, and help his family, so he decided to purchase a ticket and get on a ship and grow, go across the Atlantic to a D.L. Moody revival. He was in revival, and he was wanting to go be with, take his family and go to this revival across the ocean. And right when they was getting ready to get on the ship, about that time, a, a, a business engagement come up to where he couldn't get on the ship wasn't able to go. He looked at his four daughters and he looked at his wife and he said, you guys go ahead. The, the tickets have already been purchased. He said, you guys get on the boat. He said, I'll, I'll catch up later. I'll get on the next ship out of here. And he said, I'll meet up with you in just a few days. Little did he know that when that, that door closed on that boat, that that was the last time he would get to see his daughters. As that ship began to cross, go to the, travel across the Atlantic Ocean, as it was traveling during the night, that boat, that ship, struck another vessel, and that ship sank to the bottom of the ocean. His wife survived, and when she got to, to dry ground and, and wrote a letter to her husband, it just, this letter just wrote two, two words. It said this, saved alone, saved alone. 
His four precious daughters drown in the bottom of that ocean. So here's a man who lost his son, lost half his business, was in a bad place, and now not only did he lose that, but then he loses his four daughters. You know, for me here tonight, I can't put myself there in my mind. I can't go there. I don't know. I, I, it would literally make a person lose their mind, really. It would, to lose all that in just a short period of time. But he gets on a boat, and he gets on a ship, and he's, he's sailing across the Atlantic to try to get to his wife, his grieving wife, to put his arms around her and love her. And as he's sitting, he, the story says that he sat at the end of that ship by himself about the whole time. And when he got to the location to where his daughters drowned, he got a pencil and got a paper and wrote down these words. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. You know what I think happened to that man that very hour? I think he got a visit from the Lord. I think he got a visit from the Lord. To lose everything that he lost and still be able to write down the words, it is well with my soul, is somebody that got a visit from the Lord. I'm thankful that the Lord meets us, aren't you? He meets us and he'll come and he'll sit with us and he'll comfort us and put his arms around us. I know I look around this gymnasium tonight and there's many people that by rights shouldn't even be here, but because of the goodness of God and because of people here that wanted to visit him and him visit back and caught up on God's name, it's a miracle that we're even sitting here tonight, but it's because all because we got a visit from the Lord, a visit from the Lord. We need to remember that. That's one thing he wanted Moses to remember. He said, Moses, I have surely visited you. I'm, I'm thankful tonight for that. I'm thankful we have a Savior that visits us. I don't, think, I don't think only he wanted him to know that he was consistent and that he had compassion. But we must also remember the conversion that took place in our life. The Bible says in verse number 17, And I have set aside, I will bring you up out of thy affliction. I'm thankful tonight that he brought us up out of where we was. If every single one of us here tonight was getting what we deserve, we deserve hell. That's what we deserve. But because of him and because of what he did and because of him coming down to where we was and scooping us up, that's what the Bible says. The Bible says, I will bring you up out of. That's what it said, word for word. I will bring you up out of. That literally means he had to go down to the lowest of lows and bring us up out of what we was in. And I'm thankful tonight that where I was isn't where I used to be, that he come down and swooped down and saved you and he saved me. And he went down to the lowest of lows and he's gonna carry us up to the highest of highs in a place called heaven. You know, when Jesus died, it was just his body that was laying in that tomb. The Bible says that his spirit went down to the heart of the earth and it went down to the gates of hell. If you read it, it went down to the gates of hell and he preached. I don't think he necessarily went in hell because he didn't have anything to go in hell for, but I believe he stood outside hell of, of, of the gates and he preached and he took the keys from death, hell, and the grave. And that, he done that because he wanted to go as low as mankind could go. Right there, if sin would have its way in my life and if sin would have its way in your life, that's where we would go tonight. We would go down, but Jesus went down to the lowest of lows and guess where he's carrying us? To the highest of highs. He said, I will bring you up out of your affliction. And I've never got over the day. We need to remember the day that he brought us up out of what we was in. The Bible said, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay and set my feet up on a rock and established my goings. And he had put a new song in my mouth, even praises unto our God. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord. The Bible says he inclined. That means he bent over and he brought us up out of what we deserved. Aren't you thankful not he brought us up out of what we deserved and he's gonna carry us. The reason he did what he did is because he wanted to know what it was like to be at the lowest of low. He went to the heart of the earth, the lowest as mankind could go just so he could experience where mankind would go and be. 
He experienced it for himself. He knows us tonight. He walked this earth for 33 and a half years and experienced all the hurt that we experience down here on earth. He knows us. He knows us. And he knows exactly how to bring us up out of what we're in even right now. Even right now. The three things I think that God wanted Moses to know before he started his journey is, Moses, you need to know that I'm consistent. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you compassion. I'll be there. I don't take days off. But he also wanted Moses to remember his affliction. He wanted Moses to know what he brought him up out of. What he brought him up out of. And can I say, I think sometimes we don't thank the Lord enough for what he brought us up out of. I think we're behind on that, aren't, don't you? I know we get busy with life and we get busy with the things that go on around us. We, we worry about work and we worry about keeping our kids fed and keeping our kids fed. We worry about everything. And sometimes we can forget thanking God for what he brought us up out of. We can. I think it's good every once in a while just to get alone with God and not ask for anything, but just thank him for his goodness. Thank him for being consistent. Thank him for being compassionate. And thank him for bringing us up out of what we was go, where, 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 we, where we was headed. You know, I think about all the good things in my life. I think about my family. I think about, you know, the, the life that God has given me. But one thing that I, I fail at thanking God for is the th very thing I just preached to you here tonight. I fail to thank God for him being consistent. I fail to thank God for him bringing me up out of where I should have been. I fail to sometimes thank God for that. And you know, I believe everything tonight that I just preached to you. I believe it with my whole heart. If I didn't believe it, I wouldn't waste my time driving up and down the road and preaching to everybody about it. I believe it tonight. I believe it. I believe he's consistent. I believe he'll be there for us. Amen. I ask you if you would tonight, stand to your feet. I've given you what God's given me. Well, did I, I think I preached about 20 minutes, so I didn't lie to you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody looking around. I don't feel like we need to sing a song tonight. You know, we're here. We're family. You got something on your heart tonight. You got something bothering you. Maybe you're in a horrible pit in that miry clay in the scripture I was just telling you there. Maybe you're in a place like that. We serve a God that can come down and swoop us up out of that. He's not afraid how deep you are, how, how messy your mess is. He's not afraid of any of those things tonight. He knows exactly where you are. He knows your heart. Maybe you need to come and experience that consistency in your life that God, can, God will be there. God will be there. Anybody tonight want to step out and pray? Anybody at all? These altars have opened. They've been open since these doors have opened this evening. Anybody want to pray? Amen. Is there anybody here that would slip their hand up and say, Caleb, will you pray for me? Will you pray for me? I got things going on in my life. I got problems. I got situations. I got things that nobody knows about, and I could really use your prayers. Anybody here like that that would slip their hand up and say, Caleb, will you please pray for me? Please pray for me. Anybody at all? Amen. I see that hand. Bless your heart. Anybody else? Slip it up and back down. All I'm going to do is pray for you. I ain't going to make this any longer than what it needs to be. Just going to pray. Anybody else? Amen. Amen. Well, I minded the Lord. I would turn the service over to, I don't. Oh, there he is. I didn't see you come up here. <laughs> All right, appreciate the message tonight. I think Shirley needs about 35 or 40 minutes, so come on, Shirley. She's got an announcement to make. Oh, okay. You wanna? Okay, I just wanted to make an announcement that on March 27th, we're going to, uh, Missions is sponsoring an Easter egg hunt. Um, we're not going to do a big extravaganza like we've done in the past because of everything that's going on, but we are going to have everything outside, and that's only three weeks from Saturday, so I'm going to need some help from some people. We need lots of bag candy for uh, treats and, like, chocolate bunnies and, you know, small prizes and things like that for the, for the helpers, I mean, for the egg hunters. And I need helpers with the help with the egg hunt, to help with snacks, and to uh, help with games. Um, 
and let me know as soon as possible if you can help in any way. I need about 20 people to make peanut butter or peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. We're going to fix just like a, a brown bag sack lunch for everybody that comes. And uh, we'll furnish your, even furnish your peanut butter and your jelly if you'll just make the sandwiches for us. But uh, just something that we haven't got to do anything for the community or anything for a long time. So we're going to do this the safest way we know how and, and stay outside and pray that the weather's good for us. And, and we've got a little treat over there for you tonight. We got in 20 cases of uh, soft pretzels yesterday and our freezers are stuffed full. So if you'd like some stuffed pretzels, come over afterwards and get some. Thank you. All right, all hearts clear. Everybody, anybody have their announcements or anything? All right, you all be careful going home. We'll see you Sunday morning, 10 o'clock.